it it just seems just surreal that we have been in this study in Romans for 16 weeks. This is week 16 that we have been studying Paul's letter to the Romans. And listen to me, I, I want you to understand something, what, what this what this ministry is doing, what this podcast is doing. Since Jan, uh, June the 21st of 2021, we have been in a in him scripture study. And when we finish the bookmark that we give away, all you have to do is contact us and we'll be glad to to send you one of these free of charge. We, we Since we finished it, the Lord told me, he said, you go back and you start in Romans. And and I feel like now that he wants me to, to go through all the epistles and, and just teach people who they are or who they can be in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. You know, people don't realize what they're missing out on. They don't realize what God has made them to be, who he has made them to be in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And and God has commissioned me to do that, to teach people, to lift them up, strengthen them, not with religion, not with a bunch of man's traditions, but with God's word, giving them God's word so that they can take it and, and be grounded in it, be strengthened in it. And, and come to a place in their life that they are strong in Him. And nothing in this world that comes against them can conquer them when they come to know and understand who Jesus Christ has made them to be through salvation, through being born again and making Him Lord of their life. So listen, I want, I want to encourage you, go back to June the 21st of 2021. If you've not, uh, if you're just now getting in this podcast and getting to hear it, go back to June 21st, 2021 and, and start that entire study with us. Contact me. I'll give you one of these, these bookmarks and you can go through this study with us and, and, and learn who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and become strong in it. And then come through all those scriptures and then come into studying in Romans with us and let God speak to you and teach you and strengthen you and lift you up in the world that you live in so that you can be a light and a vessel that he can can use. I want to take this time to thank all the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you for all that you do, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to teach people His Word, to give them His Word free of charge so that they can live strong in Him. I count it as a privilege to do these prayers every time I do this weekday podcast, Monday through Friday, I do Paul's prayers for the Ephesians because I want the world to come to know and understand what God has shown me over the years. Shows me a little bit more and more every day of just how much he loves me. Paul told the Ephesians in Ephesians 1.15, he says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. 
Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I thank God. He does. He shows me that love more and more every day of my life. And he does it through his word. He does it through speaking to me and showing me just how much he loves me. You know, the good thing about all that is that if he, if he does it for me, he'll do it for you. God is willing. He, he loves you and he cares for you and wants more than anything in this world to be part of our lives. But you have to allow him in. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you. God, for your word. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in my life and the people's lives that are listening to this podcast, the people's lives that are understanding and, and coming to know just how much you're for them, just how much you love them. Lord, God and direct today and will forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. You know, we was talking about, talking about uh, more than conquerors, yesterday and and today i want to go right on down into the 38th and the 39th verse of romans 8 it says for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor anything present nor anything to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, when I think about my, my entire life, up until I was in my mid-40s, I didn't know that. I'd read that time and time again. But I didn't, I didn't know in my heart how much God loved me. I did. I'd, I'd read his word, studied his word. I've got an old Bible up upstairs that the cover's about to come off of it. That, that was the first Bible I ever, I ever bought for myself to read and to study. And, and I just, I mean, I wore that old thing out studying it in my early 20s. But I never come to the conclusion of, of all these scriptures that I just read you in Ephesians, that I could that I could count on those scriptures being for me. See, I I could believe what God says in His Word for you, and I, you know I say this over and over on this podcast, but you know it was easy for me to believe God God in His Word for you or for anybody else for that matter. But somewhere along the line in my life, I just could not come to the place that I could believe what God said in his word for myself. And it's sad that, that I lived as many years as I did that way, that, that, I, that I lived and, and, and had to, to, uh, come, to really learn the hard way about what God wanted to do in my life. Because I did. I, I learned it the hard way. But when I come to realize that Romans 8, 38, and 39 was written to me, not only to you and everybody else in this world, but it was written to me. And I could settle it in my heart 
though that no matter what come, no matter what come against me, I could count on God's love. Nothing could separate us from God's love. And when I come to know that, and I got it down into my heart, and it was settled. Boy, I mean, it just it put me on a diff- in a different, completely different world. <laughs> I was thinking about something yesterday, and you know, when when I come to know and realized who I was in Jesus Christ, the sun was brighter. I, I'm telling you, everything in my life just seemed to just co- to change, and I can't tell you the the very exact time that it did start doing that. But I know when it was when I started getting his word down into me and started realizing that that I could count on it. There's millions out here in this world that don't know that, that don't know those simple truths. And, and it's so sad to think that it's so simple that they're missing it. It's sad when I think about all the people that are that are hung up in religion and hung up in, oh, woe is me, and I'm I'm just, you know, just a sorry sinner, and I won't never be anything but that. You know, I understand. That, don't get me wrong. I understand what the Bible says. It said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I understand that. That's Romans 3.23. But if you'll just read Romans 3.24, And the very next word, it says, being justified by faith, by God's grace through faith that is in the redemption of Jesus Christ. See, a lot of people read that Romans 3.23 and say, look, there it is. We're all sinners. No, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but we've been freely justified, justified freely by God's grace, which is in the redemption of that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. See, people don't, the, there's, there's a difference in taking one verse and, and completely twisting it to make somebody feel bad, to put somebody in a religious uh, place that, that you can keep them condemned and shamed. That's what Satan wants to do. Uh, that, I, that's what Satan wants to to do in everybody's life that 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 he can, but God wants you free from free from the all the shame and the condemnation that is thrown at you through religion. Romans eight and one, the very first verse of this very chapter that we're reading, says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Understand me today. I ain't out here trying to to give people a license to sin. A lot of people listens to the to when when you get to talking about God's grace and His mercy, they lit they 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 listen at the grace message and say, "Well, you're just trying to give people a license to sin." No, we've been sinning with a license without a license for a long time. We've been sinning for a lot a lot of years. No, I'm trying to get you to understand. That through God's grace and his mercy and and him loving you that much, that nothing can separate you from that love, that when you do make a mistake, and we all do, we all make those mistakes, when we make those mistakes, we don't run from him like he's some unpleasable tyrant, some, some unpleasable bipolar person that that's doing his best to find something out about us so that he can condemn us and shame us. That's not God. That's religion. That's some of his religious people, but that's not him. And and uh, we've all got him in our lives. But when when we come to know and realize where we stand with him, God loves us. He cares for us. And and it's settled in our heart. You'll come to know and understand what Romans eight thirty seven or thirty eight thirty nine really means. That you, no matter where you're at in life, God loves you and He cares for you, and He wants more than anything to strengthen you and lift you up, to help you 
overcome the very thing that put, puts you in the state of mind that you that you may be in, living a religious life. There's freedom from religion. There's freedom from from shame and condemnation, and it it, it will all the Bible will always point you to Jesus Christ living in who you are in him. And when you come to that conclusion, when you come to realize what God is saying to you in his word, when he tells you that that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, what we was talking about yesterday, how you say, how in the world can I be more than a conqueror? I, I feel so shamed and condemned. Look, there's no, therefore now no condemnation to those who are, who are in Christ Jesus. And when you settle that in your heart, when you settle it to a place that the devil can't lie to you anymore, that see that that's the only thing that the devil can do is to lie to you and hope you are are uh, un. I hate to say the word; it, it don't sound good, but but it, it, the devil, all he can do is lie to you and hope you're ignorant of the truth of what God's word says. And when and 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 if you he can keep that 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 mess that lie going in your head for so much that that he convinces you that 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 uh, God don't love you, God God's mad at you. I mean, I'm telling you, there's hundreds of millions of people all over this planet that think that, and he's not. He's not mad at us. God is not mad at us. He's a loving Savior. He loves us and He cares for us. Our Heavenly Father wants to be part of our lives and nothing can separate that love from us. Nothing. Why? Because He gave Jesus Christ to die for us. He gave Himself to die for us, to redeem us, to reconcile us, to love us, and and show us that love. And he did, and he did, and he wants more than anything for you to accept that love and live in the truth that he has written down for you to to uh, live in. Because there's freedom in living in those truths. There's freedom in standing and knowing and understanding that by, by the grace of God, by God's love and his mercy and his grace, you can walk strong in those truths. God wants you to walk strong today. Now I've got a question for you. You may be you may be, be listening to this podcast and you'd say, I I would dearly love to be in that position. You may be born again, but you're not where you think you need to be with God. I want you to I want I want to point you to the direction of this this uh study. Find out who God says you are. Quit believing the lies of the devil. But if you're if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, if you've never been saved, you know there's millions that believe Jesus is who He says He is, and He done what He said He done. But they've never allowed Him to come into their heart and save them. They've never they've never invited Him in. God loves you. He cares for you, and He wants you. To come to him. And Jesus is that door. He is the door to salvation. He is our salvation. We've got to accept that though. We've got to believe that. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He wants to save you. He will save you. But you've got to allow him in. Confess him today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him. Change your life forever. Now, I want to invite you. Go to our website, 
get in touch with us. If you don't have this phone app on your phone, download this phone app so you can get every one of these these uh, podcasts free of charge. won't cost you a thing. It'll automatically download the next podcast. You can download all the, uh, at this time, we've got over 1,100 podcasts out there for people to listen to. Free, free. And all you got to do is is download the app and, and set it to automatically download every daily podcast, and you can listen to, it, to every one of them free of charge. Thank you. I, I, I'm going to tell you this. That, that is made possible by our partners that help us do that. Thank you, partners, for helping us make this ready available to anybody that will listen. If you got a prayer request, Go, just send us, send us your prayer request. Send us your prayer request because we want to send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God's got an answer for your prayer, and he does. And I'm, I want to send you that word that, that, that God has given us both to stand on for the answer to that prayer. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. And like I said, Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.